Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this video I'm going to take a look at how I'd approach painting an army of Red Corsairs Chaos Space Marines. Now I was inspired by the recent White Dwarf cover, um, I don't believe it's got anything to do with the Red Corsairs in it, it was just an awesome piece of art and I thought that red looked absolutely brilliant. And Games Workshop had recently sent us the new Chaos Chosen kit, so I thought it was a perfect chance to try it out. I'll be focusing on the major parts that you're going to be painting a lot of across the army with the most impactful obviously being that lovely red. Now let's paint. Over a black primer, I'm going to pre-shade using Tamiya Flat White. Now I've thinned this about four parts thinner to paint, and I'm using Tamiya's X20A thinner. This gives me a consistency of paint that I can control. Now I'm spraying at about 25 PSI here using our Harder and Seamet coat of paint Evolution, so that's got a 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle in it. If you've got anything from a 0.2 to a 0.5, this sort of pressure and this dilution, it will give you lots of control over the paint, but you'll also be able to build up these lovely translucent layers so that we get black through gray through to pure white. Now red is a color that particularly benefits from a nice bright, quite dramatic pre-shade. So you'll see that I'm working up to the highest, brightest points, so the focal areas really, around his face, top of the chest, shoulder pads, that type of thing, really bright white, and leaving some of those shadows really quite dark. Now once we're happy with the pre-shade on there, we're going to take our first red. And when I paint red, I tend to work in reverse when applying the colours. So I'm going to use my brightest colour first. This is Vermilion by Vallejo Model Colour. Now I've thinned this one down about three parts thinner to paint, maybe a touch more. Uh, and this is just using life colour thinner, so normal acrylic airbrush thinner. And I'm aiming this in the areas of the brightest highlights, so the bright white. Now for some of you, you might think it's looking a little bit pink. That doesn't bother me at all. Um, once we get the other reds on there, I don't think the overall effect's going to be pink. Um, but what it will give me is a lovely bright red highlight. And I didn't want it to go into the orange for these guys. So you can see it takes me about three or four coats of this, just working my way around the model, letting it dry in between each coat. And I just use the air from my airbrush to help dry it. Now once that's dry, I'm going to load up our main red, as it were. And this is Monument Paints, and this is Bold Pyrrol Red. Now I've thinned this to a similar consistency. So far the white, the vermilion and this have all been a very similar consistency. So that should give you some clues as to how you want to dilute it yourself, depending on what your setup is. Again using normal acrylic airbrush thinner. And I'm aiming this red basically in the mid-tone areas, so those greys and light greys, and in the shadows. If I get a little bit of it over my highlights, it doesn't matter, it's not the end of the world. But what I would say is really take your time to build these layers up, but hopefully you can already see that lovely bright red that we're starting to get. So there we are, that's about, again, about four layers or four goes round of the marine to get to that red. Now I just want to reinforce those shadows a little bit on the model. So I've loaded up Games Workshop Contrast Paint Flesh Terrors Red. I've thinned this maybe 50-50, um, certainly not much more. And I'm aiming this into all the shadow areas. So I turn the model upside down facing away from me. That means I can easily hit all those deep shadows. And then I'm looking at some of those shadows where I've made a bit more of an effort to create some sort of uh, directional light with the highlights. It dries quite a lot darker than when it goes on contrast paint. So it's always worth letting it dry a bit before you do it. Now, about three years later, I've painted all the trim in black on these guys. It's, there's no ways around it, right? It, it is a pain. You just got to take your time. Use your favorite black. I like Vallejo model color black. So that's what I've painted in all these parts with. It's worth noting as well on their armor that it's not just the trim that's black, the feet and the thigh plates are black as well. Because there's so much trim on these guys, it actually helps us a little bit with applying a first highlight. So I've loaded up a scale 75 Eclipse Gray and I can be very confident with my airbrush here and just putting in a nice sort of broad highlight on those panels that I spoke about, so the thighs and the feet. And I know that if I do get a tiny bit of overspray, it's just going to go on the trim anyway, it's not going to go on the red. But hopefully you can see with the black on there, it's framed the red already. And for a lot of people, 
I think this will be the sort of bright red that they want. Now I like to sort of dingy things up a little bit more. So I'm going to give the whole model a couple of coats of Vallejo polyurethane gloss varnish. Again, I haven't changed the pressure in my airbrush. I've just thinned the varnish with normal airbrush thinner until I can spray it through. And I give this three or four coats until it's looking like a sort of boiled sweet. And what this does, nothing to do with protecting the miniature, but it provides a very glossy surface for us to work with. Now I'm taking a black oil paint, in this case, uh, Abtalung 502 black. I like to use black uh, when I'm pin washing or panel lining, so bringing definition uh, into red schemes. I think dark blue works really nicely, um, but black is perfect for this because I can wash it over the areas of black as well. And because we put a little bit of that gray over there, and because black paints are nearly always slightly different, um, this should give us a little bit more definition as well. So I've mixed it up with some mineral spirits. I prefer the odorless uh, Windsor & Newton Sansador. You can see here, we just start being fairly liberal and washing it over the model. Now for those of you that prefer a cleaner finish, you might want to be very accurate with this stage. So use a nice fine tip on your brush and just make sure you're getting it on the panels, uh, sort of in the creases. Uh, I'm not so fussed, I don't mind if this makes the model look a little bit dirty. I think that fits with the theme of it. So I'm being a little bit more generous and just sort of slopping it on. If you do get too much of it in one area, you can just remove it with a, a Q-tip or your brush. Now once that's dry, and I left this a couple of hours, pop the hairdryer on it, it was touch dry. Now I want to go for the finish of my armour. And I've chosen uh, Ammo by MIG Lucky Ultra Matte Varnish. You go for whatever you choose, but I'd recommend something from a satin down towards an ultra matte. Now, a purely optional step, but something I like doing, is to add just a little bit of edge highlighting. And for this, I've used Vermilion, and because I'm applying it with my uh, hairy brush, it's going to show up, even if it goes over the airbrush Vermilion. I'm just working my way around all the edges. I'm not worrying about being super accurate, just sort of tip-tapping it along the edges. Just helps bring a little bit more definition to the model. And then do exactly the same to the black parts using Eclipse Grey. So although we've had a few steps up to this point, we're trying to keep those paints that we're using minimal. This means we're going to get nice consistency across an army. And it also means we can just keep it on the desk. They're all within arm's reach. Easy peasy. Now there's a little bit of brass as a tertiary colour on these guys. And I wanted to be careful not to make them look too cornate. Um, so I've gone for quite a muted sort of brass colour and Rune Lord Brass, the new version as it were, sort of 2020-ish I think, Games Workshop changed the recipe for it. Um, it's a really, really nice paint. All I've done is added in a little bit of Wildwood Contrast paint, which is a very dark brown. So any dark brown paint would be absolutely fine. And I've just mixed a little bit of that in to darken it down slightly. Then to dull it back and add a little bit of colour, I've done a 50-50 mix of Pterodon Turquoise Contrast paint and Agrax Earthshade. I'm just going to wash this all over. Pterodon turquoise on its own would have been too strong. So the Agrax just knocks it back a little bit. Gives us a really lovely sort of dull, old, worn finish. And then just to bring back a little bit of interest, this is just pure Rune Lord brass, so none of the brown mixed in. You just pick out the edges. And this nice bright metallic against that matte finish we got on the armour gives us an extra layer of contrast, which is going to help the model show up better on the tabletop. Now one of the other areas you're going to have to paint a lot of if you're going to be painting Chaos Miniatures are the sort of fangs and teeth and horns and all these little bits and bobs that are on the models and there's a lot of them on these chosen miniatures. So all I'm doing is base coating them using US Olive Drab and then I'm slowly going to mix in Vallejo Model Colour, so it was Vallejo Model Colour US Olive Drab and I'm going to mix in Vallejo Model Colour Dectan and then just keep painting it on, then add a little bit more Dectan, paint that on and work my way up to pure Dectan. I'm not going to bother covering how I've done the cloth and stuff like that, that's completely up to you, but for what it's worth on this model, I just used exactly these same paints, I just didn't go up to such a high highlight. Now the other thing we're going to get a lot of on Chaos models, again particularly the Chosen, are your tentacles and your, your mutations and bit like bits and bobs like that. So I'm going to lay down a nice sort of off-white here. You could use a white if you wanted. I'm using deck tan because I've got it on my palette. <clears throat> Excuse me. And like I say, the fewer paints we're using, the quicker and better it's going to be. 
Once that's dry, I'm going to take some Plague Bearer Flesh contrast paint, so this is a nice sort of sickly green colour, and just wash that over. And then whilst that's still wet, I'm going to take Magos Purple contrast paint, which is actually sort of pink really, it's not really purple at all, and just sort of start to mix that in as well. This is a nice sort of quick way of doing it, gives us a little bit of interest on the model, but really what we're trying to do here is let all that wonderful sculpting do the work for us. So here he is with the details painted in. Nice and simple, I just use a dark silver on all the silvers. I think I use Metal Colour Series Burnt Iron, but you, you use whatever dark silver paint you like. And then I've grabbed a couple of brown uh, oil paints. Burnt Umber, if you just want to use one, would be great. I just happen to have these two on a palette. It really doesn't matter, it's not worth getting hung up on and getting the exact right ones. We just want some browns and make them dark. If you don't have a dark brown, add a bit of black in. And I'm going to add this to certainly all the metal areas, but I'm also going to wash it in around a few of the, uh, the feet and the areas that will pick up the most sort of damage and wear and tear. If we put brown over black, it will actually go into the little crevices and provide us with some contrast and some definition, even though it's a lighter colour. And we don't have to worry about varnishing or anything for this. The paints are completely safe, they're not going to react with each other as long as they're all dry before you put that next layer over them. Now I left that for about an hour while I went and walked the dog and came back, popped the hairdryer on it again just to make sure it's touch dry and I'm just going in with a nice sort of bright silver, in this case uh, Games Workshop lead belcher. I'm just going to pick out the silvers again so much like I did with the brass but what I'll also do at this stage is just go around a little bit of the trim and just do a little taps here and there just to represent a few little chips just to add a little bit more contrast and definition. You can see on the ribbing on his uh, abdomen what I'm on about when you put that nice lighter brown over just black, so all that is is black paint with a lighter brown oil over it. It gives you a nice sort of, I think anyway, a nice effect for, for very, very little work. And after all, with our army painting, the real focus with this was get that red looking right. That's what people are going to look at. Everything else is really just to complement it. And there he is done. I'll pop the pigments that I use for the base uh, down in the description, but it's exactly the same process we use for nearly all our bases here on our YouTube videos. I'm really pleased with how this guy's come out. Um, he's exactly what I was hoping for when I was thinking I was going to try and match the, the colour as near as I could uh, from that White Dwarf cover, and I think across an army this would look incredibly impactful. If you do try out this scheme on your own army, make sure to tag us in it on social media. I absolutely love seeing it when people try out these recipes. Because it's nice to know that we've been helpful, but it's also really nice for me to know what that might look like across an entire army. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, hit that like button, and if you're not already, hit subscribe, because it really helps us out. If you'd like some longer, more in-depth tutorials, then consider checking out our Patreon as well. And I'll see you next time.